Um, well, you could have. I, that's why I was, yeah, yeah, that's why I was yeah. squinching my face. It could have been a Judiciary Committee hearing I was asked about it. Yeah. Um, we'll now recognize uh, the gentleman from South Carolina, uh, Mr. Gowdy, for five minutes. Good morning, Director Comey. Uh, Secretary Clinton said she never sent or received any classified information over her private email. Was that true? Our investigation found that there was classified information sent. So it was not true? Right. That's what I said. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm looking for a little shorter answer, so you and I are not here quite as long. Secretary Clinton said there was nothing marked classified on her emails, either sent or received. Was that true? That's not true. There were a small number of portion markings on, I think, three of the documents. Secretary three, Clinton three, said, three, I did three, not three. email any classified material to anyone on my email. There is no classified material. Was that true? Uh, there was classified material emailed. Secretary Clinton said she used just one device. Was that true? She used multiple devices during the four years uh, of her term as Secretary of State. Secretary Clinton said all work-related emails were returned to the State Department. Was that true? No, we found work-related emails, thousands, that were not returned. Secretary Clinton said neither she nor anyone else deleted work-related emails from her personal account. Was that true? That's a harder one to answer. Uh, we found traces of work-related emails. Uh, in on devices or in slack space whether they were deleted or whether when a server was changed out something happened to them There's no doubt that there were work-related emails that were removed electronically from the the email system Secretary Clinton said her lawyers read every one of the emails and were overly inclusive did her lawyers read the email content individually no well, in the interest of time, and because I have a plane to catch tomorrow afternoon, I'm not going to go through any more of the false statements, but I am going to ask you to put on your old hat. False exculpatory statements, they are used for what? Well, either for this, a substantive prosecution or for evidence of intent in a criminal prosecution. Exactly. Intent and consciousness of guilt, right? Is that right? Right. Con consciousness of guilt and intent. Uh, in your old job, you would prove intent, as you just referenced, um, by showing the jury evidence of a complex scheme that was designed for the very purpose of concealing the public record. And you would be arguing, in addition to concealment, the destruction that you and I just talked about, or certainly the failure to preserve. You would argue all of that under the heading of content, you would also intent. You would also be arguing the pervasiveness of the scheme when it started, when it ended, and the number of emails, whether they were originally classified or up classified. You, you would argue all of that under, under under the heading of intent. You would also probably, under common scheme or plan, argue the burn bags of daily calendar entries or the missing daily calendar entries as a common scheme or plan to conceal. Two days ago, uh, Director, you said a reasonable person in her position should have known a private email was no place to send and receive classified information. Uh, you're right, an average person does know not to do that. Uh, this is no average person. This is a former First Lady, a former United States Senator, and a former Secretary of State that the President now contends is the most competent, qualified person to be President since Jefferson. He didn't say that in 08, but he says it now. She affirmatively rejected efforts to give her a state.gov account. She kept these private emails for almost two years and only turned them over to Congress because we found out she had a private email account. So you have a rogue email system set up before she took the oath of office, thousands of what we now know to be classified emails, some of which were classified at the time. One of her more frequent email comrades was in fact hacked, and you don't know whether or not she was. And this scheme took place over a long period of time and resulted in the destruction of public records, and yet you say there is insufficient evidence of intent. You say she was extremely careless, but not intentionally so. Uh, you and I both know intent is really difficult to prove. Very rarely do defendants announce, on this date, I intend to break this criminal code section. 
just to put everyone on notice, I am going to break the law on this date. It never happens that way. You have to do it with circumstantial evidence. Or if you're Congress and you realize how difficult it is to prove specific intent, you will formulate a statute that allows for gross negligence. Uh, my time is out, but this is really important. You mentioned there's no precedent for criminal prosecution. My fear is there still isn't. There's nothing to keep a future Secretary of State or President from this exact same email scheme or their staff. And my real fear is this. It's what the Chairman touched upon. This double-track justice system that is rightly or wrongly perceived in this country. That if you are a private in the Army and you email yourself classified information, you will be kicked out. But if you are Hillary Clinton and you seek a promotion to Commander-in-Chief, you will not be. So what I hope you can do today is help the average person, the reasonable person you made reference to, the reasonable person understand why she appears to be treated differently than the rest of us would be. With that, I would yield back. We'll now recognize the gentlewoman from New York, Ms. Maloney. Uh, Director, thank you for your years of public service. You have distinguished yourself as the Assistant U.S. Attorney for both the Southern District of New York and the Eastern District of Virginia. Uh, that's why you were appointed by uh, President uh, Bush to be the Deputy Attorney General at the Department of Justice and why President Obama appointed you as the Director of the FBI in 2013. Despite your impeccable reputation for independence and integrity, Republicans have turned on you with a vengeance immediately after you announced your recommendation not to pursue criminal charges against Secretary Clinton. Let me give you some examples. Representative Turner said, and I quote, the investigation by the FBI is steeped in political bias, end quote. Uh, was your investigation steeped in political bias, yes or no? No, it was steeped in no kind of bias. Thank you. The Speaker of the House, Paul Ryan, was even more critical. He accused you of not applying the law equally. He said your recommendation shows, and I quote, the Clintons are living above the law. They're being held to a different set of standards. That is clearly what this looks like, end quote. Uh, how do you respond to his accusations uh, that you held uh, the Clintons to a different set of standards than anyone else? Did you hold them to a different standard or the same standard? It's just not, it's just not accurate. Uh, we try very hard to apply the same standard, whether you're rich or poor, white or black, old or young, famous or not known at all. I just hope folks will take the time to understand the other cases because a lot of confusion out there about what the facts were of the other cases that I understand lead good people, reasonable people to have questions. Senator Cruz also criticized you. He said that there are, and I quote, serious concerns about the integrity of Director Comey's decision. He stated that you, quote, you had rewritten a clearly worded federal cl criminal statute. Did you re rewrite the law in any way or rewrite any statute? No. Now, I, I hesitate, I truly hesitate to mention the next one. But Donald Trump took these... Uh, conspiracy theories to a totally new level. He said, and I quote, it was no accident that charges were re recommended against Hillary the exact same day that, as President Obama campaigned with her for the first time. So did you plan the timing of your announcement to help Secretary Clinton's campaign event on Tuesday? No. Timing was entirely my own. Nobody knew I was going to do it, including the press. I'm very proud of the way the FBI, nobody leaked that. We didn't coordinate it, didn't tell. Just not a consideration. Thank you. Mr. Trump also claimed that Secretary Clinton bribed the Attorney General with an extension of her job. And I guess this somehow affected your decision. I, I know it's a ridiculous question, but I have to ask it. Did you make your decision because of some ki kind of bribe to the Attorney General? No. I, I, I tell you, are you surprised, as I am, by the intensity of the attacks from the GOP 
on you after having made uh, a decision, a thoughtful decision, an independent decision with the pro professional staff of the FBI. I'm not surprised by the intense interest and debate. I, I predicted it. I think it's important that we talk about these things. They inevitably become focused on individual people. That's okay. We'll just continue to have the conversation. I believe that what we're seeing today is that if the GOP does not like the results of an investigation or how it turns out, and we saw they originally were lauding you, the minute you made your announcement, they're now attacking you, the same people. And now I predict they'll be calling for more hearings, more investigations, all at the expense of the taxpayer, and they do this instead of working on what the American people really care about. Uh, they want Congress to focus on jobs, the environment, uh, homeland security, the security of our nation, affordable uh, child care, affordable college educations, and an economy that works and helps all people. Uh, I thank you for performing your job uh, with distinction and the long history of your whole profession of integrity and independence, and thank you very much. My time has expired. Thank the gentlewoman. We'll now recognize the gentleman from Ohio, Mr.